Hey everybody, welcome back to Jackson Jet Setting. Today we're checking out the Hilton Las Vegas at Resorts World. This is the cheapest of all three of the properties at Resorts World, the others being Conrad and Crockford's. I stayed for $109 a night plus resort fee, but rates can dip even lower. So let's check out the whole property and see if it's worth staying. A quick plug, if you haven't seen my other videos for the other properties, you can check those out on my channel as well. So what you're looking at here is the day guest or casino parking. It's not connected to the building. I accidentally parked there the first two nights of my stay, but then finally found the hotel parking, which is on the other side of the Resorts World complex on another street. Uh, all the parking is complimentary right now for everyone, even if you're not staying at the property. So even though each property is technically in the same building, sharing the same casino and all the same restaurants, they all have their own lobbies, they all have their own valets, and you know each one offers a little bit uh, of a different experience. I'll be posting a comparison video of all three properties shortly on my channel as well. So I'm driving from the west side of the property. This is away from the strip. You'll see the casino parking right here, and then if you keep driving, the first valet area that you come across is the Hilton. Uh, parking was $22 a night plus tax, but uh, self-parking was free. The Hilton is the largest of the resorts on property, but it has probably the smallest lobby of the three, which I found kind of perplexing and was definitely the busiest. It seemed like um, most people had uh, booked the Hilton during my dates. What was strange was I was upgraded to a one bedroom suite as a diamond, which is great. Um, they don't have fine hotels and resorts rates for the Hilton here, um, but I was put back in the Crockford West Tower that I was in the night before when I was staying at the Crockfords. And then I was put on a higher floor. I was actually on the 65th floor, which is pretty incredible. Um, so I was happy about that, but a little confused. Um, and I'll show you how I was confused in this room tour. So we're uh, going into my Hilton suite here. Note, I say Hilton. And the layout seemed very similar to the Conrad Las Vegas suite that I had two nights prior. Uh, you have a nice uh, half bath over here for guests, which is always nice to have in a suite. And then as you walk into the living room, you'll see really nice furnishing. Honestly, one of the nicest Hiltons I've ever been in. Um, I think in terms of value, the Hilton at Resorts World is by far the best. Um, but what was confusing throughout the room is that a lot of the things that I noticed from my Crockford stay were still in the room, including nothing Hilton branded, uh, all Crockford branded. So I don't know what the deal is there. I don't know if someone could possibly be booked into here if they were staying at the Crockfords. Um, I don't think they would notice really much of a difference, but uh, my room the night prior at Crockfords was done up a little bit nicer than this. Um, but overall, I was very happy with uh, this one bedroom for $109 a night. Um, as a diamond, I got $12 per person, so $24 total to use um, on property. Unfortunately, the only place I could use it was the breakfast in the morning, so I had to go to Sun's Out, Bun's Out, which you'll see in a bit, or you can use it at the kitchen. All room service here is done via Grubhub, which is a difference uh, for this property versus other properties on the Strip. So now that we're done with the room tour, let's check out some of the restaurants on property as well as a casino tour. Uh, we'll also check out the district and then check out the pools and the gym. So here's Suns Out Buns Out. This is uh, the breakfast uh, to go place. I recommend this over the kitchen. I felt like the food was a lot better. Here's my view of my food from the night before. And so then this is the view of the property as you walk in from the day guest parking lot. This is where I accidentally stepped in first. 
Um, to the left is the sports book and the dog house. It's more of an American style restaurant. They also have a grilled cheese food truck in there, which is cool. They have dueling pianos at night and live music. Pretty lively place at night and obviously a great place to watch sports. Uh, and then to the right there is the start of the casino and then all of the restaurants on property are sprinkled around the casino as uh, familiar to anyone who's ever been to Vegas. Mari Gold, don't pay attention to that. That closed this week suddenly. Uh, and then if you go up those escalators, that'll take you to the level with the conference room, the gym, and the spa. The pools are on the fifth floor and all the lobby uh, lobbies for the hotels were of course on the same level of the casino. So pretty cool. The kitchen is located nearby, so you can have breakfast here. It's open 24 seven. Um, so they have lunch and dinner as well. I had dinner here as well as breakfast uh, one of the days of my trip. Uh, thought, thought the steak and the food was great. The service was good, though it can get really busy in the morning. So keep that in mind. Suns out, buns out is more grab and go. If you want to use your credit on the buffet, you definitely can. It'll more than cover it. It's not the biggest buffet in Vegas. Uh, it's more of a normal hotel buffet versus something sprawling like Wicked Spoon at the Cosmopolitan or the Bellagio buffet. But overall pretty good. If you don't want to use it on that and want to have something more a la carte made to order, they also have that. The resort has to have a casino bar in the center of the casino. It's basically a requirement in Vegas. Loved this one, some cool LED stalactites. So here is Famous Food Street Eats. This is the best part of the resort in my opinion. Plenty of food options here, plenty of places to use any credits you might have, either from Diamond, which at the Crockfords you'll get $50 a day for two to use. They told me that I had to use it on either Suns Out, Buns Out, room service, or the kitchen, which was a little bit of a bummer, but I did have $125 to use here. Um, over a dozen restaurants and bars to check out all different parts of Asia, some Italian food, um, and then one barbecue spot and one chicken place, as well as a super cool surprise that people are really loving. I was staying here midweek, so I was able to get in pretty easily, but I will show you the secret in just a second. So as we continue to walk past a few more of the stalls here at the Famous Foods Street Eats, you'll so see as this we walk shop. Past. And it's a real shop, uh, but there's a secret to it. If you walk through one of those shelves, it's actually a secret door to Kitty Kitty Vice Den, which has excellent cocktails and well worth a visit if you're coming to the Resorts World. So once I entered, I saw that everything was decorated for Christmas, which was great. I had a cool Baiju cocktail, which I had never really had a cocktail made with that before, and it's usually uh, more of a gasoline flavor. This was really good. It was green tea infused. Highly recommend talking to the bartenders, seeing what their favorites are. All the drinks that I had were fantastic. And then as you leave the bar to the left is the restroom, which was uh, all done up and really, really cool. 
lots of uh, theming here. So let's go into a little bit more detail in each one of the stalls. This is actually Steve Aoki and his brother's Japanese barbecue spot. It's located on the left side of the famous foods area. Fantastic. Um, I know it's really just more of like a fancy kebab, but I love the sauce on these. It had an awesome just taste to it. So definitely recommend trying this out. I also have one of my favorite Japanese beers on tap. So I was really a big fan of this, even though it's relatively simple compared to the other foods. Now, this being a street, I really loved how they kept with the theme. I love theming, love theme parks. So loved how uh, they did this. It really felt uh, not necessarily authentic, but just a really fun uh, environment to hang out in. And I loved all the neon signs above the bar, um, but nice centerpiece for the whole experience. One place, Pepita's Kitchen, is probably pretty unique for people. You don't really see Filipino restaurants too often outside of the big cities, um, but they had a nice suckling pig there, which is pretty unique for people to check out. These pork dumplings from China, lightly fried on the outside, were fantastic. They're definitely one of the most popular items at the food hall, so definitely check those out while you're there. They are worth the price and one of the cheaper items that you can buy. Under $10, I believe, or right at $10. And then Spring Leaf Prada Place, more of an Indian Malaysian flair. Um, if you have kids, you can kind of get a cheese quesadilla, but more um, Indian style and check it out there. Loved it. People were really nice working there too. Here's a look at the finished product. But as you continue to make your way past that stand is my absolute favorite stand, the Char Kui Tiao. And I'm probably butchering that Malaysian street noodles. Oh my God, they were so good. Nice pork, uh, big bits of pork in there. It's also right next to the Singapore chicken and rice booth, which I've actually been to this place in Singapore. It's authentic. Wasn't too big of a fan of the sauce this time around, but really, really good uh, chicken um, and a decently healthy dish compared to other items. So let's take a look at the center bar there that actually has its own um, self pour beer taps. So you get a card from the bartender, they just keep a car, uh, a credit card on file so that uh, you don't run away with your beer. And then uh, you get beer that you can continue to drink, uh, you know, based on the outs basically. So it's fun to try a bunch of different beers at once there. I tried some of the sushi um, at, I believe it's called Nori Sushi there. Um, pretty decent sushi. I've had better sushi in Vegas, but um, for the price, pretty good. So now moving away from the food hall, there is more food to be had here at Resorts World. So this is Wally's. Uh, it's a, basically a wine cellar with a restaurant. It's pretty awesome. I do have a clip of the food and wine that I had there a little further on, uh, but this clip shows you the district at the resort. So this is the shopping and dining area um, at the resort. It's connected to the casino. Um, it also has the biggest feature of the resort um, that people take pictures of, I think, which is this big globe with LED. Uh, that has different shows. Um, pretty impressive, though nothing really super exciting like other hotels on the Strip. Um, I did feel like Resorts World needs something else to draw people in, um, but the food is really, really good. Um, so here's a take, taking a look at Wally's. I got a nice prosciutto pizza and a glass of wine uh, just as a little late night snack. And there it is. It was very, very good. Definitely worth doing if you're into that. One thing I thought was really cool was Resorts World paying a tribute to what came before it. So the Stardust was one of the most famous hotels in Las Vegas. It sat on the same site as Resorts World and was torn down a number of years ago. Um, so the Stardust lives on in some small tributes here, including the sculpture of what was the old sign. Moving on, there is Mulberry Street Pizzeria which is from Los Angeles. They have some great pizzas there. I did try a slice. And then that's located pretty close to Zook down at the end of the hall there, which also has the IU Day Club um, and Red Tail, which is run by Zook. So um, the Day Club and the Night Club are gonna be very popular. They have big DJs there set up now, Tiesto and Zed, uh, some of the biggest in the world. So that's probably what's gonna draw the most people at night to uh, the casino area. Um, so they have uh, a day club pool, 
Um, that's obviously separate entrance. That's not included in any resort fee or if you get access or anything like that um, with, uh, with your resort stay. So some other smattering of restaurants here, an alcoholic ice cream stand that you just saw there. There's the entrance to Zook. And Redtail, I thought, was a pretty cool concept. I didn't stumble in there, but they have a lot of games uh, for people to hang out. They have big, uh, you know, trash can-sized beer pong. Uh, so a lot of fun for you to hang out with friends. No real views of the outside, uh, which I felt like was uh, kind of a bummer. Uh, Vegas usually has nice weather. It's usually nice to be out in the sun there. Uh, they do have a Mexican restaurant. I didn't check that out. Um, where I'm from in Scottsdale, we have plenty of good Mexican food. Um, and then eight, which is a cigar bar and uh, just a, a bar itself as well, but I didn't try out. Some more art, this one a car piano. And then caviar bar, which had its soft opening while I was there. So this wasn't open um, the week before I was on property. So if you're into caviar, you got a spot at Resorts World. And then here's my favorite piece of art. It's the VW bug that's all squished up into a perfect sphere. Really, really cool. Definitely worth uh, taking a look at. It's kind of amazing um, thinking about how they're able to uh, do that. And then a high-end Japanese sushi spot right on the edge of the casino. So if you want something even more high-end than what's at Famous Foods, you can try that out. And then walking towards the Hilton lobby, you see more options, including the Ginting uh, Palace Restaurant and the Ginting Lounge, uh, and then some more shops. So lots and lots and lots of options here. There are also two Starbucks, um, and I'll show you that in a sec. So now moving up to the Starlight Lounge on 66. This is one of my favorite spaces um, at the resort. It's on the 66th floor. It actually has some uh, gaming machines like uh, video poker at the bar, uh, some fancy expensive cocktails, but has this killer view down the strip and also has an outdoor terrace that you can enjoy your drinks on and look down the strip. Uh, this space doesn't really exist too much in Vegas, so uh, really, really a cool spot and worth checking out. They do have a small dress code. And there might be a wait for a table in the evenings. And then one more casino bar is Gatsby's. They also have some fancy cocktails, um, so worth checking out if you're into those. So Resorts World is gonna have a lot of artists. They have Luke Bryan, they have Carrie Underwood, uh, a number of others, I think Katy Perry. Across from that is the Starbucks. Um, so plenty of options to eat and drink here at Resorts World. You really shouldn't go hungry. Uh, I think it's the biggest highlight of the resort. So now that food is done, let's take a look at the pool complexes. So there's the day club that I mentioned. You don't really get access to that unless you pay to enter. There's a big dirt patch that no one really knows what's going on there. Some people say it's a water park, it might be a third tower, who knows. Um, but to the left there is the kids pool and then the main pool is that long pool right there. The infinity pool, which uh, Crockford should actually get access to, but since I was coming here in December, it was actually closed. Then the cabana pool and then the Bimini pool, which was the only pool that was open uh, during my December stay. So they do heat the pool and you can get some pool time in. Uh, middle of the day was about 75 degrees, so it wasn't um, freezing, but wasn't super warm like Vegas is kind of known for. Uh, but let's take a look on the ground level of the full pool complex here. So it looked like there were a couple places to get some food and drink as well down here. They had the Bimini bar, which is near the Bimini pool. Um, you had an agave bar, which was near the main pool. And then you have this place Bites, which is closer to the family pool. Um, so plenty of places to spread out as a family and really loved um, how big this spot was. Uh, lots of different areas and different degrees to which you can uh, you know, elevate your experience. Uh, I think Crockford's, it's, it's really awesome that they offer some dedicated pool chairs at the Infinity Pool. I wish I could have gotten a shot of it, but it was locked and closed. Um, 
but the rest of the pools look really nice. I imagine it's going to get very, very busy here in the summers when the resort is fully booked. So now let's take a look at the spa and the gym. So first, the gym. Um, by the way, the pool complex is located on the fifth floor, the gym and spa are located on the second floor with the conference rooms. So the gym is one of the most impressive gyms I've seen on the Strip or really at any resort. It's massive, uh, has plenty of places for people to work out. There's six Pelotons. Uh, they were busy even during my stay in mid-December, mid so I can only imagine what they'll be like when the hotel is actually sold out. Um, but you see like a, a push track for, you know, some sleds. There's uh, plenty of free weights. There's a whole stretching area. There's plenty of cardio machines that overlooks um, a nice little area of Resorts World too. So I really enjoyed this gym. I felt like uh, there's plenty of uh, spots to work off all the delicious food and drink that you might be having in Vegas. And then I did check out the spa. I wasn't able to get a tour of the spa, but it looked pretty high end. There's an extra charge even if you're staying at Crockford's. Unfortunately, it'd be nice if they included at least, you know, a steam room or a sauna uh, in there, but most Vegas hotels won't. Um, but that's basically the end of my tour. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and watch for more Vegas videos.